Hey everybody, welcome back to the ECG channel. My name is Reed. In today's video, the topic is going to be going over third degree heart blocks, or another way to say it is complete AV blocks. And so as you can imagine, this is the most severe form of AV block, where we have complete destruction of the ability to conduct from the atria to the ventricles via the AV junction. And so let's talk about, like we always do, anatomy and talk about via the anatomy what the criteria is going to be to diagnose somebody with a complete AV block. So remember we have this cardiac skeleton that is this connecting tissue, connective tissue that um, makes sure that any sinus beats that propagate through the atria get funneled down to the ventricles via the AV junction, right? And so the AV junction we said comprised is comprised of the AV node and two the His bundle, right? So that's our we'll do it in red. So we have the AV node proper, and then we've got the His bundle. So number two is our His bundle. And so these are the two structures that take the signal from the atria that comes down, delays it by, we said the AV node delays it by typically 120 to 200 milliseconds, and then it passes it down. But in people with a third degree heart block, in people with a third degree heart block or a third degree AV block, no signal can pass the AV junction. So the AV junction no signal can pass. So oftentimes we get sinus P waves that are unable to conduct. Okay. And so how do the ventricles beat, right? Because if no signal is getting down to the ventricles, how do the ventricles beat? Well, ideally, you're able to generate escape rhythms you can develop, if the, if the His bundle is still functional, if we have a functional His bundle, we can develop a junctional escape rhythm. And a junctional escape rhythm occurs at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute, right? Those are narrow complex beats because they take the normal His per Kinji system when they do happen. But if the junction is diseased, and the junction's not able to conduct because that's part of our AV junction block. If this person with third degree heart block, then we resort to a ventricular escape beat. And so we know that ventricular escape beats are only at a rate typically of 20 to 40 beats per minute, so maybe just enough to keep you alive. And so that is what we'll see. We will see in a third degree heart block, we will see atrial P waves that are marching through, right? The problem is the P waves are gonna be getting blocked. And so we will also see an escape rhythm Right? It could be either a junctional or a ventricular escape rhythm. And those will be our QRS complexes. Now, something that is interesting is that we will have P waves that are conducting normally. So the P to P interval will be regular. And the R to R interval will be regular. Why? Well, that's just because they are com occurring completely irrespective of each other. There is complete dissociation. Okay? Complete dissociation here. The only thing that we do know is that the P2P interval will be faster in compared to the R to R interval which will be slower. And so 
Let's take a look at some examples where there is no communication between the atria and the ventricles. And so here, what will we have, right? Complete heart blocks, we will always have a regular rhythm because our rhythm is an escape rhythm. But we don't know that yet. This is a narrow complex rhythm. It's usually a bradycardia because the escape rhythms are usually bradycardias. We have a QRS that ends on a solid line there. So our rate here is 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So in between 50 and 60, we'll say 55 beats per minute. So there is our bradycardia. It's a narrow complex rhythm. So that bradycardia at least is being conducted from the His bundle down through a rapidly conducting uh, Purkinje system. So when we look at what the atria is doing here, what do we see? We see we've got some P waves. Here's a nice P wave. Here's another P wave. But notice that, you know, maybe you think, is this my PR interval? Well, that doesn't occur here. That doesn't occur here. And what we do see is if I barch my P waves in green, in this rhythm, I've got a P wave. I've got a P wave. If you see, if you look really closely, you can see there's a P wave hidden right there. P wave. There's another P wave. There's another P wave. There's another P wave buried in this QRS complex. And so what I'm getting at is if you notice, my P waves are just marching through. And the rate of P waves, if you measure it out from this P wave, to this P wave is maybe 300, 150, 100, a little less than 100. It's at like my atrial rate is 90 beats per minute. That's my atrial rate in my 55 beats per minute is my ventricular rate. And notice that they don't talk to each other at all, right? If they did, my POs would be conducting at some point. But because this is a regular, narrow, complex escape rhythm from the junction, that's why it's very regular. So you will have a regular R to R interval that is, that is slower than my regular P to P interval. And that's because we have what? We have a complete AV block or a complete heart block or a third degree heart block. There's no communication. Let's look at the next ECG, another example here. We have another narrow complex rhythm. It's regular, right? You can see it's regular throughout the entirety of the strip. If you measure my rate, you know, sometimes you can't spot these until you measure the rate. And you see I've got a QRS that's somewhat on a solid line. We'll measure the rate 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. This is like 42. So we'll call this 48 beats per minute is my ventricular rate. And I look to see what the atria is doing, and I see I've got some P waves. I can see my P waves best in lead V1. I've got a nice P wave there. I've got a P wave that's on top of that T wave that doesn't seem to conduct to a QRS. I've got this P wave that lands right in front of that QRS, but notice that the P waves are not landing right in front of the QRSs every time. Right, there's my other one that's right at the end of the ST segment. So I'm looking for a pattern, right? Someone might think, well, read, doesn't this P wave conduct to that QRS? Well, no. Just because the P wave, you know, the P wave is representing depolarization of the atria, right? So we get this wave of depolarization through the atria. Just because that happens to happen right before the QRS doesn't mean that that is the signal that conducted down. It doesn't mean that. It just means that that P wave happened to occur right before a junctional escape rhythm in this case. It's just the timing of it, right? And you know it didn't conduct because look at the other QRSs. That one doesn't have a P wave in front of it. That one doesn't. 
That one does, but it's a different relationship than this one. We don't expect that to be normal AV junction behavior. So what do we have? We've got these P waves that are just marching through. Look at that P wave buried around that ST segment. P wave, P wave. What is the rate of P waves if I measure from this one to this one? It's 300, 150, 100, 75. This would be 60, so about 68 beats per minute. That's my atrial rate. So my, I have a normal atrial rate. I've got a normal ventricular rate that's regular, but my ventricular rate is slower than the atrial rate, and there is no correlation between the P waves, which are my atrial rays, and my QRS, which are my ventricular waves. So because of that, that is diagnostic of a third degree complete AV block. And so... Uh, luckily, this is a third degree complete AV block with a junctional escape rhythm, right? So this person's AV block, we said there are two structures at the AV junction. We said there are two structures at the AV junction. There is first the AV node itself, and then there is the His bundle. And so either of these, if they're completely diseased, can lead to a third degree block. Now remember, if the AV node is what gets completely blocked, I still have my His bundle that can create my junctional escape rhythms. And those junctional escape rhythms are usually at a rate of what? 40 to 60 beats per minute, exactly what we see here. But in another case, if the His bundle is what completely got blocked, we are unable to create and generate a, a junctional escape rhythm. We can only generate a ventricular escape rhythm. So a ventricular escape rhythm would be a wide, complex QRS, and it would be slow, right? It would be 20 to 40 beats per minute. Right? That would be if I had a ventricular escape. Same concept, but slower. So I hope this helps you understand third degree complete AV blocks. What's the diag or what's the treatment for these people? They all get pacemakers, right? They need a wire to go into their ventricles to make sure that their ventricles be in the appropriate uh, rates. And um, you know third degree AV blocks, the you know well, some of the big issue is that their the atria is squeezing but the ventricles aren't squeezing right after all the time, right? And so these people, um, their hemodynamic um, efficiency is worse. And so that's why it's important to get a pacemaker that can really sync the atria and the ventricles together because right now they are not in sync, right? And so this causes hemodynamic dysfunction for people. It can develop heart failure, fluid retention, all sorts of things. So hope this helps. If you have questions, feel free to leave them down uh, in the comment section below. Don't forget that you can download these PDF documents for yourself so that you can make your own notes and you can save them for later. And thank you so much for staying tuned. I hope this um, series has helped you all. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. See you on the next ECG video.